invite you to stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, throughout the ages you transformed sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us as a people ready to proclaim your promises to the whole world through Jesus Christ, our healer, our brother, and our friend. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated for the word of Scripture. A reading from Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance and with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Let us read the psalm in unison. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, nor any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. When they breathe for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. A woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, 
you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking into heaven, he sighed and he said to him, Ephapha, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of our loving, liberating, and life giving God. Amen. There we go. Let's hear it for the politically incorrect Jesus. Let's hear it for the one who decides this Syrophoenician ain't getting anything here. And I'm busy trying to just take a break. And nobody's going to leave me alone. Let's hear it for the in for politically incorrect Jesus. Because have we not all walked that path? Have we not all decided, you're not in. And I am the center of all. Every human being has that tendency particularly when being uh, duressed by externals, like a pandemic, like an economic downturn. And yet, she in her hopes persisted and brought him, and this is one of these passages when we, you know, in theology, when you're discussing the human nature of Jesus, you know, do you know everything because he was the son of God? And apparently not. This is one of those moments when Jesus' own understanding was widened, broadened, deepened, however you want to understand it. He came closer to the fullness of God's mission. And so she simply wanted to be seen. She wanted to be seen by him and she wanted to be heard, but first she has to be seen. And when he could dismiss her as a Syrophoenician Gentile, you know, I'm here for the house of Israel, she wasn't seen. But she got seen. She protested. I'm not sure what the tone of the conversation was. When you're reading in a text 2,000 years later, it's a little flat. But she got seen. Last week, we celebrated with our bishop, uh, last visitation here, and several other things. But in our sermon session, our table conversation, there was a lot of conversation. And one of the threads out of that conversation for me was people talked about it's good to see you. It's good to be seen. It's good to be here. And that's one of the gifts of community. It's also one of the challenges to be sure that we're still seeing somebody and not let it drift into older, slightly out of date perceptions. The activity of seeing someone is intentional and continuous and it's a work of the spirit. And it's enough to just kind of keep us together here especially uh, in this pan wherever we are in the pandemic, <laughs> we thought we were going to be one place and not quite there. And yet, we know what it is to see each other. That's the invitation of the gospel. That's when healing and transformation in people's lives really happens, when we see them. When we, in our hope of resurrection, see another person who is feeling excluded or marginal or in these intense divides over issues that many times as I listen to them closer really aren't that far apart and shouldn't be this intense. 
But what do we bring as people of faith? And where do we get new insight like Jesus did in this gospel? But the, our work is to see the other. Seeing the other allows us to begin to hear the other and to discover their story, their journey, where the Spirit of God is working in them, and that's where we connect and build bridges. Because the Spirit of God unites. It supports, it sustains. It gives us the old-fashioned word temperance, which means just a little more patience than we might ordinarily have. That's part of our spiritual quest and journey, and it's an exciting gift. Standing as you are able, let us confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. O oh God of imagination, you feed us not with crumbs, but with your life-giving word, so that we can feed the hungry and bring your word to those who crave true life. For the earth in its beauty, for the wisdom and commitment of leaders, for those with birthdays, Karen, Kay, Daniel, Luke, Mike, Ernie, and Michael. For those with wedding anniversaries, Brett and Maria, Daniel and Justine, Chris and Stephanie. You are the solace, you are the source of solace in every need. For those who are sick or injured, Kevin, brother of Jean, Carolyn, Peter, Crystal, Sean, Vic, Joanne, Sally, Marion, David, Carol, Corinne, Ryan, Judy, Bob, Beckett, Lars Jr., Gary, Janet, Nancy, Mary, Susan, Cloyd, Haley, Linda, Joe, Patty, Mark, Mary, Fritz, Jim, Jan, John, Daryl, Doug, 
Diane, Anne, Susie, Chris, and Michelle, and for all those in continuing care. For those who have died and those who mourn, give your grace to all who remain before you. Lord, just announced was that we will continue in-person service at nine o'clock masked and distanced and hopefully the pandemic will not increase in our area standing as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Maker and Redeemer of all, 
we lift our hearts to thank you because you open our ears to hear your voice and release our tongue to sing your praise. You created the earth as a place of encounter between you and your creatures. You called your people from slavery and wilderness to covenant and abundant life. You gave your children manna to share, and from the crumbs that fell from their table, you made a banquet to welcome the Gentiles to the joy of your compassion. You made the body of your crucified and risen Son the altar of your mercy and of our redemption. And so we zealously proclaim the triumphs of your grace, joining with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven in the hymn of your eternal glory. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Life-giving God, you share your bread with the poor and you make the bank this banquet the place where we are united as one body in your Son through the power of your Spirit. Make this meal a moment of reconciliation between you and your people and let those who share in it be ambassadors of reconciliation to your, wondered, your wounded world. Send your spirit upon this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you do this, do this for the remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God of the afflicted, you have chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that you have promised to those who love you. Make your church rich as you are rich in compassion and mercy, in wisdom and grace, and make your people poor as you are poor in sharing the calamity of those who endure injustice and knowing the pain of all who live with the world's anger. Take away the binders of poverty that all may see with joy the riches of those the world calls poor and remove the binders of the wealthy that all may see with love the poverty of those who the world calls rich. Hasten the day when your gentle Mercy triumphs over world's harsh judgment, and all find a place at the feast of your kingdom. <laughs> Ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on them in your hearts by faith, 
with thanksgiving. I invite you to bow your heads and let us pray God's blessing. As you loose the tongue of the man who could not speak and who could not hear, loose our hearts and imaginations to see you in the world around us, to see others who bring the gift of your spirit to us, and fill us with the joy of learning more how wonderful your kingdom is. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and forever. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. 